Hello, everyone. My name is Claire Jones, and I offer systemized business solutions to art businesses and badass small business builders so that they can grow and scale without burning out. So this is the next video in a series where I go over some how to tips, tricks and strategies to grow your business without burning out. These are the types of tips, tools and strategies that I use both in my own business as well as in my clients businesses. And today I thought I would go over how to use the Ascension model and video technology and digital marketing and all kinds of other digital products and programs to pivot art businesses online during these challenging times. So this is a follow up video to a free hour long webinar that I did for my Facebook business page about two weeks ago. And I decided to create this webinar because so many small businesses were struggling to figure out what to do as this coronavirus is disrupting business as usual for millions of people across the world. And today I'm not going to go over the entire hour long webinar that I did a couple of weeks ago. You can go check that out on my Facebook business page if you want to look at it. It was a live and it's there for replays whenever you want to look at it. But today I wanted to go specifically over how to use these frameworks, these guidelines for art businesses in particular. So I'm going to be using the same presentation that I used for the webinar, but going through it as framed through an art businesses perspective. So before I dive in, I want to clarify what I mean by art businesses. So I use the term art businesses as different from arts organizations. Arts organizations tend to be nonprofits. So think museums, theaters, ballet, opera, symphony, stuff like that, museums. And art businesses are for-profit artistic organizations, companies. And so think galleries, think high production artists, studios, high production photographers, music centers, art schools, the kinds of art businesses that are not considered nonprofit organizations. And so I specialize in those businesses in particular because I have a huge background in the arts. My mother was a art teacher for 25 years and once I turned 15 and got my first job, I started working in an art camp that was held by the Art Academy of Cincinnati. And from there on out, I worked in music centers, I worked in theaters, I worked in museums, I worked in art galleries. I even did a semester abroad at the Sotheby's Institute of Art in London and did their art and business semester program where I learned about the art auction world, about the art gallery world, basically the commercial art world in general. I mean, that's where I did my first business plan for a class project when I was 20. So I have a deep love for art businesses and a deep knowledge of art businesses. And so I wanted to frame my particular webinar, my particular guidelines for successfully pivoting online during these challenging times for art businesses in particular. So to start off, I highly recommend that people look at what their art offerings are first and foremost and how they can structure them using the Ascension model. Next, I will go over how to use video technology to support and distribute our products and services. Three, how to market our virtual offerings effectively. Four, how to process virtual payments. And five, how to access other small business support grants and loans that are available in times of disaster. So to start off, I want to go over the Ascension models. So Ascension models are super important as you're considering pivoting your business online, but they're also super important for business as usual. They are a way to diversify your offerings so that you are not entirely reliant on one stream of income. So typically most service-based businesses exclusively rely on the level four that you see here, which is one-to-one -one access. So think about chiropractors, think about hairdressers, think about bartenders, think about people who have to be 
interacting with their clients in person in order to create business income. But in times of crisis, like the coronavirus pandemic, that is no longer feasible. That's no longer a viable business structure. And the businesses who are thriving right now are those that have already filled out the other levels of their Ascension level offerings. So the group access offerings, the one-to-many access offerings, and the freebie offerings. And these are the businesses that are more easily able to pivot online during these times because those offerings are very easily moved online when you need to pivot to virtual interactions exclusively. You know, in-person interactions are no longer safe right now. And a lot of people are struggling on how to pivot their business services, their products online as a way to keep their business going throughout this crisis. And so if you are an art business, let's say you are a gallery, what would you create for these Ascension model levels? So for freebies, that means free videos, blogs, newsletters, white papers, reports, checklists, stuff like that. These are very easy, you know, entertaining, useful items that people either get through social media, they get as a download from your website, they get through a newsletter offering of yours. These are just easy, quick freebies that you can offer to whet people's appetite, whet people's whistle for who you are, what you offer, and give them just a little taste of what you can do for them. So if you're an art gallery, you might, might want to consider doing a, let's see, you could do a blog about the art pieces that you are presenting in your gallery at the moment. You could do a blog on the history of the artist. You could do a examination of the provenance of the history of the painting itself or the sculpture itself or whatever the art piece is. You could do free video interviews of the artists who are currently featured in your art gallery space right now. Those are easy to use freebies that you can share widely on social media, on your website, in email newsletters, any of those digital marketing methods. But if you are looking at the one-to-many access level, these are self-paced webinar courses, workbooks, templates, DIY kits. These are basically offerings that you create in a set amount of time by yourself, and then you hand it off to the customer or the client to use in their own free time so that your physical presence isn't needed for them to use the product. So maybe if you are an art gallery, you want to create a self-paced webinar course on art history or the movements in contemporary art or the themes in contemporary art and just do general overviews of what an art gallery customer might look for as they are purchasing art for their own collections. So this is going to be a slightly more expensive product. So think anywhere from $4, $7, $9, anywhere up to $49. Typically these are going to be going to cost under $100 per piece of content, depending on the depth of expertise that's presented in the content or the perceived level of expertise in the content. So if you do a webinar series, you might wanna charge $19 per video so that the entire webinar series would be something like $129 if you're doing several videos. So it's an easy to access DIY self-paced product that they can just buy over and over and over again without your direct involvement. So that's something that you might do if you are an art gallery and can no longer have people physically visiting you during the coronavirus pandemic. You can create these online offerings in a way that they can purchase them from you without having to interact with you in person. And then the third level is group access. And so this is going to be slightly more expensive than the self-paced, the one-to-many access level because this requires your physical presence. It requires your time as the expert because you are doing workshops, you are doing live webinars, you are doing mastermind or networking events or in-person courses where your presence is required in order for the customer or the client to consume the content. 
So maybe if you're an art gallery, you might consider something like an art gallery networking group. So there's not many groups like that available right now. There's not really a networking organization that's devoted to art businesses. So maybe you want to be a pioneer in that field. Maybe you want to bring all of these art businesses who are struggling during this pandemic together and charge them a small fee, maybe $14 per person, maybe $14 a month, something like that for a mastermind or networking group where everyone can meet up for a couple hours each month, talk about their issues, brainstorm with the group, really delve into how they can help each other through these times. So that's an example of a group access program. You could also do a live in-person course, in-person workshop. Again, this doesn't have to be in physically in person, but it can be via Zoom or any of the other online video platforms. So how can you create content where it's group access to you and your expertise? Maybe you want to do a lecture series where they're live of you giving lectures on the various art pieces that you've had in your gallery over the years, something like that. And then finally on level four, this is the one-to-one -one access level. And so this is going to be the most expensive because the client or customer is getting your one-to-one -one attention exclusively. It's not going to be diluted among a group of people. They are getting your undivided attention as the expert. So this is obviously going to be the most expensive offering that you offer. And again, this can be done online. You know, you don't have to be in person to directly interact with someone one-on-one. -on -one. You can do this via Zoom. You can do this on the phone. There's a lot of different options that you can use for this. So if I hope that gives you a bit of an idea as to how you can use these various levels to produce digital offerings that don't require physical in-person interactions. So for example, if you are a high production artist, you have a studio, you create a lot of work, you are you know, pretty well sustained with your artworks, you're not a starving artist, it's not a hobby, this is an actual business for you. How can you create freebie level offerings? How can you create one to many access level offerings? How can you create group access level offerings and one to one access level offerings all online? So maybe you want to, for the freebie level, do free videos on art techniques. You know, how do you properly clean your brushes? How do you properly tape out a new canvas? How do you do all of these tips and tricks that you as an artist, it comes second nature to you. But for people who are not familiar with art, they just don't know. Maybe you want to do a time lapse video of you creating an art piece and post it on social media. A lot of artists are doing that nowadays, and that would be a very easy free content because you're already creating the work. You just need to film it. So it's not any extra work for you to make that freebie. Maybe for one to many access, you want to do a workbook or a DIY kit to create your own art pieces in your style. Maybe you want to do a DIY kit for paint by number with any of your art pieces, something along those lines, something that the person can do in their own time without your direct involvement. And then for group access, maybe you want to do a workshop on teaching people, you know, your specific techniques in person. So kind of like Bob Ross. Bob Ross was very successful at creating content that could be consumed by a lot of people at a lot of different times. He had that one-to-many access level figured out. But what if Bob Ross did in-person workshops, that kind of stuff, in-person demonstrations, that kind of stuff. So think along those terms when you're thinking about one-to-many or group access products. And then one-to-one -one access, that's pretty much you doing commissioning work or something that's specific to that particular client. Um, this is the kind of work that you're probably going to be doing most of your sales in anyway, and you can easily do that via e-commerce platforms. So maybe you are a music center. Maybe you offer music lessons from a variety of musicians that teach people in the community how to 
use various instruments, play various instruments, and you want to create an Ascension model for your business model as well. So for freebies, you could do blogs on the history of the various musicians that offer their talents and their teaching abilities to your music center. Maybe you want to create a newsletter of everyone's testimonials as they um, uh, consume your music educational services, checklists as to what materials are necessary if you are learning for the first time how to play guitar, what's the difference between the various strings, what's the difference between the various picks, stuff like that. That would be easy freebie content. One to many access level for a music educational center would be workbooks or DIY kits to teach yourself music. Maybe you want to create a pre-recorded webinar about how to teach yourself how to play guitar, how to play trombone, something like that. That would be an easy one-to-many access level offering. For group access, you could do a workshop or a live webinar series on teaching yourself how to play a certain um, piece of music, how to play an orchestra piece. That's where you could really tap into group music performance. You could tap into choral music performance that way. It's really easy to create a group of musicians and teach them that way in the group access level. Or in the one-to-one access level, this is where you're doing, you know, cello lessons online with one person, piano lessons online with one person. This is going to be a little bit harder virtually, but people make it work. I've heard of people doing Zoom piano lessons or Zoom cello lessons where the person is listening and correcting them as they go. So this is a way to further your students' educational training in music, but still not have the in-person physical interactions required. So these are just kind of ideas that I've been thinking off of the top of my head of ways that you can create Ascension models as an art business. And so the next step in this process is now that you have ideas for your Ascension model offerings, how are you going to create and distribute them to the world? And this is where video technology comes into play. And I mentioned a few of those options when I was going over the Ascension model, but there's different software options, there's different hardware options, there's and there's best practices when you're doing these videos. So for hardware, obviously you need a camera and a head microphone. Optional headphones, mm -hmm. I recommend if you are in a noisy or potentially disruptive environment, it just blocks out external noise. And you can even use your headphones that you use for phone calls on your cell phone that have the microphone embedded in the wire. That's a really cheap and easy way to get started with videos without having to invest in additional equipment. But I prefer using a external blue snowball microphone when I'm um recording my videos because having an external microphone versus the microphone that's embedded in your computer, it decreases the amount of background noise that is picked up by the microphone. So camera, again, I use the camera that's embedded in my laptop, but there's a lot of easy, really high quality clip-on cameras that you can find on Amazon really easily. So there's a lot of different options for you out there. In terms of software, Zoom you want to use when it's a conference call. That means when there's multiple people on the call, that's when you want to use the Zoom platform. Another favorite platform of mine is Loom, and that's when you are doing more of a presentation. That's the platform that I use when I'm doing these how-to videos because I can have a presentation going in the background as well as the little circle of my face in the corner. And you can choose to either have just your face or just the presentation or your face and the presentation in one screen. And Loom also allows you to download these videos if you want to, to your computer. So then you can upload them easily to YouTube or you can password protect them, make them public, make them private. There's a lot of different options that the free version of Loom offers. So it's really helpful. And then Facebook or Instagram Live. This is when you want to present to your audiences in a live format and get interaction from 
your audiences in real time. This is where they can comment. And you can even combine a lot of these platforms as well. You can use Zoom and Loom with Facebook Live. You can't use it with Instagram Live, but you can invite other people to join your Instagram Live. That's a new feature that they just recently rolled out. Instagram Lives have to happen from your phone. They don't allow you to post directly from your computer to Instagram, but Facebook, you can use both your computer and your phone in order to post to Lives. And then YouTube, it's the most highly searched video platform out there, and it's actually going to surpass the Google search function here soon in terms of um, search engine results. People are increasingly using YouTube as a search engine and it, video technology is really just increasing, increasing on a day-to-day -day basis. So highly recommend you use YouTube. And again, you can make it public or private and you can even use YouTube lives, but you need at least a thousand subscribers in order to go live. So best practices, please use story as you're doing your videos. People are contextual beings and they love hearing the context of what you're telling them. How has it helped you in your own life? Give them real life examples, anecdotes, personal stories. People love being immersed in the context of what you're giving them. So just don't be afraid to use story. And don't be afraid to be imperfect as you're doing these videos because people want to see that you're an imperfect human being just like them. If you're too poised and polished, it kind of turns people off because they feel like it's scripted. They feel like you're being fake. They don't feel that genuine human personality behind the video. Like right now, I'm not completely, I'm completely off script. I didn't write anything in prep of this video. And there's going to be ums involved. There's going to be pauses while I think of the right word. I have a lot of practice with doing these videos, so it's probably a lot more polished than someone who's starting off. But don't worry about being perfect. People aren't looking for perfect. They're looking for someone who resonates with them. So also, please include call to actions throughout your videos and provide multiple calls to action throughout your videos. Literally tell your viewers what you want them to do after they view this video, whether it's signing up for your newsletter list, whether it's going to your website and purchasing a product, whether it's sharing this video with other people, commenting, literally tell them what you want them to do. People don't make them guess, basically, just literally tell them. So then next we are going to go over the digital marketing practices that I highly recommend. And it's all about creating that no like and trust factor with your audiences because people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. So how can you consistently and regularly build that no like and trust factor with your audiences? Because there's so many options out there in the market right now that it's highly unlikely that your service or product is the only service or product that's available to them. There's going to be competitors in your industry, no matter what industry you work in. And how can you differentiate yourself from those competitors? How can you stand out among the rest and create that no like and trust factor with your audiences? And so I've provided some links here on how to use social media content calendars, because if you consistently and regularly post online, people are going to get familiar with you and get used to seeing your face around. And it positions you as an expert. It builds your credibility. It makes people wonder, huh, they seem to know what they're talking about. So I'd like to know more. I'd like to go to their website and give it a purview. Just scroll through it and see what they're up to because they seem to really know what they're talking about. So how can you create content that is of value to your audiences? How can you create content that entertains or educates or is useful to them? And this is where the freebie level of the Ascension model comes in. So that's why I highly recommend using social media content calendars. And then Hootsuite is a great scheduling application for scheduling out those posts so that you don't have to do it every day, all day. So how can you streamline your time as you're posting to social media? Because then you can do it in batches. If you just want to create all of your social media content for the next two weeks, you can spend a couple hours doing that, post it to Hootsuite, schedule it out, so then you have time to do other things for the next two weeks. So really helpful stuff here.
And then again, we're, we're talking about marketing sources. So how can you create that know, like, and trust factor on various marketing platforms? So there is a advertising survey that the Nielsen Global Trust Group did back in 2015. This is the most recent survey I could find. They do it regularly every couple of years, but this is the most recent one I could find. And it's basically what advertising sources do people trust most? And this is the North America results that they provided. So number one is recommendations from people I know. Again, like no like and trust factor. So when people see that you are recommending other brands or other companies that, you know, your friend posts on Facebook about a shoe company that they have really been loving recently, then that's going to up the no like and trust factor for that shoe company in your brain. And so 82% of consumers trust recommendations from people I know. And that's really the importance of social engagement on social media, because people see what their friends and family are, what companies they're no like and trusting. So how can you tap into that as well? Number two, consumer opinions posted online. So 66% of consumers trust consumer opinions posted online. So this is the importance of Yelp reviews, Google reviews, Facebook reviews, product reviews, like the product reviews you see on Amazon. How do you get testimonials from your past clients, your past customers, stuff like that? People are going to trust that because they already know that real live people have experienced your services and products and have liked them. Number three, ads in newspapers. 65% of consumers trust ads in newspapers. If the newspaper is something that they like, know, like, and trust already, then they're automatically going to know, like, and trust the brands and companies that are featured in that newspaper. Number four, emails I signed up for, 64% of consumers trust those because they've already gone through the effort of signing up for those emails and they've already extended some sort of preliminary know, like, and trust factor by signing up for those emails. Number five, editorial content such as newspaper articles and as are on TV are tied at 63%. So how do you interact with um, press sources like blogs, newspapers, magazines, anything online, podcasts, interviews, that if someone already trusts a certain podcast and they hear that you are interviewed on that podcast, then the no like, and trust factor is going to be upped in their brain for your company. Finally, I'm going to move on to digital payment options. So how can you sell these new products and services online? I highly recommend looking into PayPal, Square, WooCommerce, and Shopify. PayPal is very easy to get set up with. So is Square. WooCommerce is the WordPress website platform for handling e-commerce, and it includes inventory management software as well. Square includes inventory management software as well. But I also highly recommend Shopify. I've built two businesses through the Shopify platform because it is an all-inclusive platform for e-commerce. It You can not only buy your domain, you can build your website, you can manage your inventory, you can manage shipping costs, you can manage marketing on there, you can get all kinds of different reports. It is a really all-inclusive platform that I highly recommend for people who are scrambling to sell things online. It's really easy to set up. There's all kinds of preset website templates that you can choose from. And their support desk is really helpful. They have a lot of great blogs. They have a lot of great educational sources to really help you troubleshoot through any of the problems that you may be experiencing as you're setting it up. And again, I did a video on this, how to create websites. Check it out if you want more information. I don't have time to go more in depth about it today, but that's a great overview of the payment options. And then for payment processors as well, PayPal, obviously a great choice. QuickBooks allows you to send invoices. It's again, a great way to have your softwares all inclusive so that you're not having multiple programs talking to one another. QuickBooks will be your financial tracking as well as your invoice creation and generation. So it's all in one. And then Jotform is a great platform for creating any type of forms, especially order forms. And they integrate with many of the popular payment processors like PayPal, Square, 
stuff like that. So those are great ways to get payments, process payments without a lot of work on your end. Again, I did a video on how to use JotForm, so I'm not going to go too in depth in it right now, but highly recommend. And finally, there's a lot of small business support assistance going on out there during this crisis. And particularly Artist Trust in Seattle has created an Artist Trust Relief Fund for art businesses and artists who are struggling in the coronavirus. So I highly recommend checking them out. And there's also the Small Business Administration who's offering grants and loans assistance. And then Facebook for Business is also offering grants for small businesses across the globe. And finally, me. I'm a great trusted resource for anything that you want more information on as you're looking through this how-to video. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, follow me on YouTube, or consider joining my free Badass Biz Mastermind group on Facebook. This is where I post most of my freebie content that I generate on a weekly basis. I'm posting stuff on there pretty much every single day. And like these how-to videos, like Facebook Lives, like blogs, always recommending books. So that's a great resource for anyone who's struggling during these times as well. So that's all that I wanted to cover today. I hope that that was helpful in terms of framing all of these resources and guidelines in the art business framework. So let me know if you guys have any more questions. Comment below. Share this with anyone who you know in the art business field so that people can get access to these trusted resources. That's really my goal at the end of the day, because I have all of this information and all of these resources inside of me, and I really want to share them with as many people as possible right now, because I really want to make sure that we can continue to thrive, disaster or not. So let me know, hit me up, and that's it. So love you all, take care, and have a good one. Bye.